Hey guys, welcome back to day four, halter training journey with Jolene. So today I'm going to be working with her in their paddock uh, for a couple of reasons. It's fresh, I can go right to her, and sometimes you'll get a different attitude as you will see in their in their paddock than you will when you go outside. So I find the training starts right in their pen, whether it's a catching issue or a leading issue, it starts right there. So I like to give them some of the same lessons I'm going to be teaching them outside. So um, a lot of times in the halter training program, their horse, our horses don't even come out of the paddock. But today's lesson is going to be about teaching her to yield to a restraint pull. Um, day three lesson was her first day on the halter. She didn't give me much challenge in that area, but she wasn't fresh. Like today, she's going to be fresh, had a few days off and she's in her own pen so she's going to be more motivated to challenge me so I'm going to really talk a lot about that um, the things that you need to see I've got either in real time or slowed down in slow motion but some of the other stuff that's kind of mundane that I'm just doing I've, I've got it sped up so we can keep the lesson down around eight minutes you can see as soon as I start backing her backing her up you'll see her or start resisting that restraint pull right now and I just catch a release catch a release catch a release catch her a little harder catch harder catch and harder catch and then release right if you keep steady pull they're gonna panic but they have to keep finding that release that's very 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 important another important piece is the angle Right? I can only win that restraint pull if I'm at a 45 or, or more angle. I can't, I can't be straight on. If she tries to back up and pull straight back away from me, um, she's stronger than me. And if she gets too straight going away from me, as you'll see in this clip coming up, I would never pull because I can't win. So you have to really pick your battles when it comes to restraint pressure and know, you know when you can pull and release and when you, when you can't. You have to catch them, you know, if they whirl out of there, you have to catch them before they get straight or you got to let them go. And I'll talk more about that when it happens. So you can see she's, she's very light. And because I got that long line, I just got, I still got to be ready to catch her. She's still yielding. I, I still make it about putting her neck down so she knows that's a, that's a quitting place. I'm trying to talk her out of it by putting head down because in the future... I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, we're going to talk her out of lots of things by putting her head down, right? If she's bad with a farrier, bad to deworm, nervous in her surroundings, just by putting a head down, you can bring them back to, uh, back to neutral again. So yeah, I just, I'm still working on that backup to try to get rid of that resistance that you're seeing right there. Um, the better control I have on her in the backup and coming forward the more control we get on all of her body parts the less that this um, resistance of fighting the restraint pressure will will be just gets better and better so right here I'm working on shoulder and now I've got it in slow motion this is where she pulls away from me you can see how loose my hand is so she just she really takes off fast right here and just rips her head. See, she ripped her head and pulled it away from me, then got straight. See, I was getting ready to pull her, but she got straight. If I would have pulled on her right there, she would have reared over backwards. Or if she was big enough, I couldn't have won the pull. But right now, I set her up so I'm at that 45. Take the slack out slow, pull hard, release for the hip going around. Catch her again. See her throw that hip at me. She pushes that hip towards the rope. That's what they will all try to do. Horses learn to do that. But I'm diffusing this fight like it's not much of, it would be way worse of a fight. I've learned that the hard way. If I would not give them that release, that slack. I need to, to pull them hard, but throw that slack at them again. See how I throw that slack right back at her again? So, you know, steady, mundane pressure is not your friend, guys, when you're working with horses. You, you always want to be... Uh, really light and that's why we put the strategic lessons of the how to's in your libraries because it's it's so important and there's so much to talk about in the lesson 
the how to I find I don't get to cover the the what and the why and that's what the purpose of this journey video is is to cover the what I'm doing and why so right here is when I start teaching her uh, to yield to the pressure coming forward teachers start leading forward so I bend her to motivate her to move her body any part of her body and I release for whichever body she moves first and it's it's always their hips I find most of the time and with her it's the backup now you'll see there see I release for that shoulder and release for that shoulder and release for the shoulder stepping towards me and then I then because I got the shoulder a few times I'm gonna switch and go the other side and just same thing that's bend the bend is the motivation and that'll be the same when you're under saddle guys if you can bend them you can get them to talk them out of some things you can use that bend of their body for a lot of different motivations all the way through the program and releasing for hips that direction hips and then shoulders and then hips and then shoulders and then hips and then shoulders so it's you can tell which way a horse wants to be, where what direction they want to be what where they're magnetized to by these spiral turns and she wants to go out down in the corner that's where uh, sandy is at the moment so she don't want to leave sandy she i'm trying to get her to go to the hay so i can let her rest on hay so there comes Sandy back around. She's been going back and forth. When Sandy went up the pen, she followed her up. Now Sandy comes back again. She's going down. So you'll see here, it gets close to where I start. I put it back to real time because she really broke free right here. So she broke free and took several steps forward. That's, that's what that whole circling was about. So circling your horse to motivate him, guys, starts right back here on day four. Or it could have been day three, depending on your horse, but it starts early on in their lessons. And then I just I just let her have her um, hay there, so she got motivated by being left alone and eating her hay, so it was a, a double whammy. And then I just go get a brush and just use the brush. The curry comb is kind of a scratching deal. I just kind of touch her all over. It's very light. I'm not trying not to make it uncomfortable for her. She's got a lot of um, hair that I'm trying to, winter hair still that I'm trying to get off her, but... I'm not going to do it all on this first time. I'm just going to make it a pleasant experience and get so I can touch her feet. So on this side, I just work on touching her legs. And then I'll come back and work on picking them up. But just for the video's sake, I touched her legs on this side. And then the other side, I took it because she was good about it. I went to the other side and I'm picking them up. So I just go with her, let her move, go with her, let her move, go with her, let her move. Just working in a pattern. She kind of pushed her shoulder in me, so I pushed it back right there. And I quit when she lets me pick it up and hold it for a second. I let it down and then do the same thing to the back. So that's basically all I'm doing on, on this lesson here, guys. So um, I hope that all made sense. And um, I will see you on day four. Five.